The Show Designer 2 is a lighting controller based on the successful and simple to use Show Designer. The Show Designer 2 expands on the existing features and adds several others. The approach of this controller is to simplify the programming process as much as possible while still offering a high level of control at a low cost. 48 lighting fixtures of up to 32 channels each can be controlled using the DMX 512 outputs. Control of up to 1024 DMX lighting channels are possible. Support of Elation lighting fixtures as well as other popular brands are included in the setup menu. Additional lighting fixture profiles can be downloaded from the Elation website. The operating system of the Show Designer 2 uses flash memory so the software can be updated via the compact flash port. Software updates will be made available on the Elation Lighting website at www.elationlighting.com. The power input. This is to connect the 9 volt DC power supply that is included. The audio input. The audio input is used for connection to an external audio source. This is a line level input that should be connected to a line output of a mixing console. This allows for chases to be triggered to sound. The keyboard input. Keyboard input is used for connection to any PS2 type keyboard which allows presets, scenes, chases and shows to be named. The RS-232 port. RS-232 port is used for connection to a computer to back up the memory and to upload fixture profiles. The MIDI in and output ports. MIDI in and out allow for an external MIDI controller or sequencer to trigger program scenes in an automated installation. The polarity switches. These switches switch the pin polarity for the three pin DMX outputs only. Setting to the left makes 2 pin positive and 3 pin negative. Setting to the right makes 3 pin positive and 2 pin negative. The two DMX outputs. These outputs allow for control of up to 1024 DMX lighting channels. 512 on DMX out 1, 512 on DMX out 2. The compact flash port. Compact flash port allows for memory backup uploading of fixture profiles, and updating the controller software. The eight channel faders are used to control the individual channels within each fixture or fixture group. The bank switch is used to select the bank of eight faders that you require active. The LEDs indicate the active bank. Another function of the faders is as scene masters during playback. The faders allow manual control of the crossfading between scenes as well as allowing you to run eight scenes simultaneously. The 48 number buttons. These are multi-purpose buttons. The function buttons above these 48 buttons determine their purpose. The fixture button allows you to select fixtures for programming or manual manipulation. Up to 48 individual fixtures, each consisting of up to 32 channels, can be controlled with this console. There is an internal fixture library that supports all Elation fixtures as well as other popular brands. Additional fixture profiles are available for download from the Elation website. The Fixture Group button. This button allows you to define and select a group of like fixtures. 48 fixture groups allow for instant access of a preset group of fixtures. The Preset button. The preset contains channel settings within a fixture or group of fixtures. A preset provides fast and easy programming of scenes by giving you instant access to colors, gobos, effects, and focus points without having to search through channel levels with the faders and data wheels. 1,152 presets can be stored into 24 pages. Each preset page holds 48 presets. The chase button. A chase is a sequence of steps that create motion or quick repetitive changes. Each chase step incorporates identical hold and fade times. 1,152 chases can be programmed into 24 pages. Each chase page holds 48 chases. There is also a factory page that contains 48 built-in chase movements. The scene button. A scene is a recording of the state for all your fixtures. A scene can include a chase or group of chases, a preset or group of presets, and manual channel adjustments of selected fixtures. 
A fade time ranging from 0 to 25.5 seconds can be set for each scene. Incorporating a fade time to a scene will give you smoother transitions between scenes during playback. 4,752 scenes can be programmed into 99 pages. Each scene page holds 48 scenes. The Show Button A show is a sequence or list of up to 255 scenes that can be played back at pre-programmed times or played back manually by pressing the Go button for each show step. Before recording a show, you must first record scenes. 1,152 shows can be programmed into 24 pages. Each show holds 48 scenes. The Preview button this button allows you to view a scene and adjust its fade time before calling it. Pressing the Go button activates the scene in preview mode. The Record button. This button is used to store a preset, chase, scene, or show into the Show Designer 2's memory. The Masters button. This button is used to playback scenes using the channel faders. Scene Master Mode allows for manual control of the crossfading between scenes as well as allowing you to run eight scenes simultaneously. The Find Button. The Find Button affects the way the joystick and data wheels operate. When Find Mode is selected, moving the joystick or data wheels will increment or decrement by the smallest possible amount. The Audio Button. The audio button enables the audio input as a trigger for chase steps when selected. The black button. The black button will stop all activity and black out all fixtures. Pressing and holding the black button for two seconds will force all DMX channels to zero and clear the edit buffer. The beat button. The beat button allows you to override the tempo or beat of a chase by tapping on the button in time to any music that is currently playing. The Go button. The Go button is used to manually trigger a scene in preview mode or to manually trigger show steps when a show is set to run in manual mode. The Menu button. The Menu button is used to configure the Show Designer 2 for your particular lighting setup. The Add button. The Add button is used to add a chase or show step when in record or edit modes. The Add button is also used to access a couple of hidden menu options. The Erase button. The Erase button is used to erase undesired information from the Show Designer 2's memory. The Enter button. The Enter button is used when recording chase and show steps. It is also used to select various menus that appear in the display. The Enter button must always be pressed following any changes made to a menu option to make it permanent. The left and right arrow buttons. These buttons are used to move a cursor that appears in the display. The plus yes and minus no buttons. These buttons are used to select settings for various menus that appear in the display. The joystick. The joystick controls pan and tilt of all selected fixtures that incorporate a pan and tilt feature. The LCD. The LCD displays all relevant information depending on the operation. The four data wheels. Data wheel 1, data wheel 2, data wheel 3, and data wheel 4. These wheels are used to increase or decrease the fixture channel values that appear in the display directly above each wheel. Data wheel 1 is also used to select settings for various menu options that appear in the display. The XLR input. This input will accept a compatible gooseneck work light. However, in the near future we will change this to USB, in which case our USB work light will then be compatible. The power switch. This turns the unit's power on or off. The page display. This displays the preset, chase, scene, and show pages. The up, down arrow buttons. These buttons are used to scroll through the various pages. To choose the fixtures that we'll be controlling with our Show Designer 2, we'll select from a list of lighting fixtures in the fixture library. To get there, press the Menu button, then use Data Wheel 1 to scroll through the menu options. 
we're looking for the Choose Fixtures option. Once you're there, press Enter. Next, use Data Wheel 2 to scroll through the various fixture types in the internal library. We'll be controlling four PowerSpot 250s today, so once I find that as my fixture type, I'll press Enter. A message will appear that reads, Auto Patch may change some addresses. OK. We press Yes to confirm or No to exit. I'll press Yes to confirm. We'll use Data Wheel 1 to scroll to Fixture 2. You'll repeat the process and use Data Wheel 2 to scroll through the various fixture types. Again, I'm looking for PowerSpot 250 as I'll be controlling four PowerSpot 250s. Once you find it, press Enter. Once again, the message will appear and press the plus yes button to confirm. Use Data Wheel 1 once again to get to the next fixture, which is fixture 3. We'll then use Data Wheel 2 to select your fixture type. Once you find it, press Enter, followed by the Yes button. Data Wheel 1 gets me to Fixture 4. Power Spot 250. And Enter. Then Yes to confirm. I have now selected all four fixtures that we'll be using in today's demonstration. To exit from the Choose Fixture setting, press the Menu button one time. The next menu option we're going to get into is the Patch Fixture setting. Use Data Wheel 1 to select the Patch Fixture setting. Then press the Enter button. With Auto Patch on, it will automatically assign an address to each fixture in ascending order with each DMX address immediately following the last channel of the previous fixture. The first fixture will be assigned to DMX output port 1 and it will start at address 1. After all 512 channels have been used from that port, DMX output port 2 will be used for any remaining fixtures. If you wish to turn Auto Patch off, you can do so by adjusting Data Wheel 4. Once you've set it to off, press the Enter button to confirm. This now allows you to select a DMX channel for all of your fixtures. You can also select which DMX output port you wish to have the fixture function at. For example, if we wanted fixture 1 to function on DMX output 1 and start on DMX channel 5, we would press enter at this point. Then that information will be stored. To get to fixture 2, we'll use data wheel 1, which takes us to fixture number 2. The controller is automatically configuring 16 channels per power spot, so it automatically added up 16 channels and gave us the next available DMX channel, which is channel 17. If you wish to change this, you can do so by adjusting data wheel 3. Once again, you would press enter to confirm. Now you would only make these changes if you wanted to patch the fixtures yourself. The default is with auto patch on. As you can see, Auto Patch has reset our channel to 1 for Fixture 1. When we go to Fixture 2, it automatically added 16 channels to it, which gave us the next available channel of 17. Fixture 3 would start on channel 33. The Patch Fixture function is also very useful when needing to know what each fixture should be addressed at. You can go through all 48 fixtures. As we've only entered four fixtures, any fixture that reads channel off indicates that there is no fixture selected there. Press the menu button 
twice to exit. You can also invert the pan and tilt for the joystick for any selected fixture. But before doing that, I want to show you what the normal pan tilt function is using the joystick. I'll use my faders to open the beam. I'll then adjust my lights so that you can see the beam and the pan tilt motion. As you can see, all moving heads are moving in the same direction. I'll now invert two of the fixtures pan settings so that we get a crossing motion. To do so, press the menu, then use data wheel one to scroll to the pan and tilt invert option. Once you're there, press enter. Fixture number one has its pan and tilt set to normal. This is the case with all selected fixtures. Normal is the default setting. As I wish to invert the pan channel for fixture two, I'll use data wheel two to change the pan setting to invert, then press enter. I'll use data wheel one to scroll to fixture four and use data wheel two to invert the pan setting for that fixture. Then press enter. Now as I use the joystick to move my lights, you'll notice a crossing motion as I'm moving the pan channel of my moving heads. To exit, press the menu button twice and all inverted settings will then have been stored. We can also load fixture profiles that are available at the Elation Lighting website. This will allow you to load fixture profiles into the Show Designer 2 from the Compact Flash port or the RS-232 port. Fixture profiles contain detailed information about a lighting fixture such as the name and function of each of the channels as well as the name and DMX values of the steps within a channel. Once loaded, a profile can be selected from the fixture list when choosing fixtures. Fixture profiles are most useful when using the data wheels to program lighting fixture channels. The display will be able to show the function and current setting for a channel. The wheels will be able to select pre-programmed steps within a channel, such as the colors on a color wheel. To load a fixture profile from the disk, press the menu button, then use data wheel 1 to scroll through the various options. Once you've found Load Fixture Profile from Disk, press Enter. As long as you've stored the information on the disk, you will get a list of all the fixture files that are on this disk. You can then use Data Wheel 1 to scroll through the various files. Once you find the fixture that you want to load, press the Enter button. These are very small files, so it will load immediately. Once it's loaded, press the menu button. This gets us back to our options menu. We can then use data wheel one to get to the choose fixture setting and press enter. I've already named fixtures one, two, three, and four, so I'll go to my next available fixture, which is five. I can then use data wheel two to find the profile that I've loaded. The difference between a fixture profile and the standard library file is the word in parentheses here that reads profile. To select it, press enter. Once again, you'll get a message that appears that says the auto patch is on and some address may change. Press yes to confirm. We'll then use data wheel one to get to fixture six. We'll use data wheel two 
to select the fixture profile once again and press enter. Once the message appears that some addresses may change, press the yes button. Data wheel 1 will get us to fixture 7. Data wheel 2 gets us to the fixture type, which is our profile, in which case we'll press enter, then the yes button to confirm. Fixture 8, fixture type, then enter, and yes to confirm. We've now selected four PowerSpot 250 profile versions. To exit, press the menu button two times. Now that I've selected four fixtures from the internal fixture library and four fixture profiles from the Elation website, I'm going to show you the differences between the two. I'll select fixture, then select one of my first four fixtures by selecting the relevant button. Selecting fixture button four brings up the standard fixture from the internal fixture library. It'll display the first four channels for the selected fixture. The pan and tilt functions are displayed in values, which is normal. Pressing the right cursor button gets us to the next set of four channels. As you can see, our color and gobos are also in values. Adjusting the wheel up increments in values of five. For finer adjustments, press the find button, in which case it increments in values of one. I'll now show you a fixture profile from the Elation website. Fixture 5 is a fixture profile, in which case it's now showing us the first four channels that are the pan and tilt settings. Once again, they are in values, which is normal. We'll press the right cursor key, which now shows us more detailed information about the color channel and more detailed information about the gobo channel. Adjusting the wheel, one click will automatically snap to a new color or half color. For the gobo wheel, each click snaps to the next gobo. When programming, this is easier as you know which gobo you are at and what color you are at for all selected fixtures. In addition, fixture profiles give you presets on pages F1 through F4. I'll now select a preset from my color palette, which are all these top row. Selecting button number two on the color preset row gives me an open blue color. For the gobo, I can select any from the second row. Selecting button 18 activates gobo six. Now using these presets are a lot faster than having to use the faders or the wheels as you can quickly change the way your stage looks. To gain manual control over your fixtures, press the fixture button, then select the fixtures that you want to control by selecting from the 1 through 48 buttons. I'll select fixtures 1, 2, 3, and 4 as I'll be controlling four PowerSpot 250s in this demonstration. You can then use the eight channel faders, the four data wheels, and the joystick to control the channels of your lights. The display shows you four channels at a time. To see the next four channels, press the right arrow button. Press the right arrow button again to see the next four channels. To see the previous four channels, press the left arrow button. If you're going to be using the faders to control your lights, while well the LED for bank one is lit up, you have control of channels one through eight. 
Pressing the bank button will illuminate the second bank, which gives me control of channels 9 through 16. I'll open up the shutter and dimmer with channels 15 and 16 by raising the two faders up. I'll then bank up so I can use faders 1 and 2 to control the pan and tilt. Or, once again, you can use the joystick to control the movement. If we press the left arrow key and get to our pan channels, we can also use the wheels to control the beam position. It's real helpful to have your DMX chart handy when controlling lights, especially when you're using the faders, as there's no detailed information telling you what color comes up when and what gobo comes up when. We'll use the wheel to adjust our colors. Once again, this adjusts in increments of five. Pressing the fine will adjust in increments of one, which gives us a finer adjustment. Presets provide fast and easy programming of scenes by giving you instant access to things such as colors, gobos, and beam settings without searching through channel levels with faders or data wheels. Show Designer 2 allows you to record up to 24 pages of 48 presets for a total of 1,152 presets. For your convenience, the words color, gobo, focus, and effect are printed next to the four rows of number switches. These types of presets can then be recorded on the corresponding row if desired. Unlike scenes, which record the look of the entire stage, presets are used to record only several channels worth of information. Presets can then be recalled and layered to make a scene. In addition to the 24 pages available for the presets that you create, there are four pages labeled F1, F2, F3, and F4. These pages are for factory presets. These are presets that are already programmed for you when you install a fixture profile. Fixture profiles for all Elation fixtures and other popular brands are available on the Elation website at www.elationlighting.com. It is also important to note that when recording a preset, you should only adjust the channel that you want to record a preset for. For example, if you want to record gobo presets, then you should only adjust the gobo channel and you have to open the shutter and dimmer before getting into the record preset mode. If you wish to include an open shutter and dimmer into your gobo preset, then you would adjust those channels after you've engaged the record preset mode. In order to be able to view what we're doing, we'll first select the fixture switch, then select the fixtures that we want to record presets for. We can then open the shutter and dimmer using the faders, or the data wheels. We can adjust the pan and tilt position so we can view our beams in plain sight. Next we'll press the record button followed by the preset button. As I'm going to go ahead and record some color presets, I'll adjust my color channel which is channel 7 to the down position. Now that I've adjusted this channel, Show Designer 2 automatically tracks that change and I can store this as a preset. I've connected an external keyboard to the rear input of the Show Designer 2 so I can name my presets with the keyboard. I'll name this White Preset. Once you've named it, you can use the up and down page buttons to select between the 24 pages. Once you've selected the page that you want to store your presets on, you can store it to the first available button. Being that we are recording color presets, we'd want to try and record all our color presets on the top row of buttons regardless of the page number that we are on. This helps organize all your presets. I'll store that 
to button number one. That preset has now been recorded. I'll now use the color channel and the color channel only to adjust to the next color. I'll name this preset my aqua preset. I'll then store it on button two. I'll adjust my color channel to the next color, which I'll then name orange. and store it to button three. Adjusting the fader to my next preset. I'll name this one light blue, in which case you can also use the cursor buttons to move the cursor over, then use the data wheel or the